Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 1st of December, so we can start getting into the, the Christmas spirit. As always, I have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. And new videos this week, I've spent a huge amount of time over the last month diving into generative AI and the various retrieval augmented generation models and vectors and embeddings. And AI 900 was updated that AI fundamental certification to add a generative AI module. So I created the content you need to know for that. It's about one hour long, but it goes into a whole bunch of different things about how the different models work, why we care about embeddings and vectors, and it builds on a video I did last week diving into that. So even if you're not doing AI 900 or you have it already, this is really a core set of knowledge to understand the importance of the generative AI and what it's doing. So would really recommend that regardless of your interest in any of the artificial intelligence certifications. So on to what's new, on the storage side, so Azure NetApp Files are really doing a lot of work to support smaller capacity pools to really let me onboard to the service earlier. And it works with volumes that are using the standard networking. So what they've done in GA is I can now start off with a two terabyte uh, capacity pool. That's down from four terabytes was the, the previous smallest version. And I can do one terabyte increments. And in preview, they have one terabyte capacity pools as the starting. So they're working on making that barrier to entry even smaller. On the AI side, I'm gonna start including some of these things because I think no matter what your focus area, you need to understand some of these things. So GPT-4 Turbo preview model is available. So the big deal here is that it's 128,000 token size. Now that's 128,000 tokens total. So I can do a huge number of tokens going into my prompt into the model, which means I can include more relevant information to that prompt if I wanna augment it with additional knowledge. The output tokens is still 4,096. So the response that is generated back is still 4,096, but I can send it a huge amount more relevant information, which is gonna enable it to do um, better results. But it is a preview model, so the recommendation is not to use that in production yet. The GPT-35 Turbo 1106 is now GA, so that has a max contents of 16,000 tokens with 4,000 um, generated back. Um, that 1106 is actually important for the GPT-4 as well, because if you go and create a GPT-4 model in the regions it supported, you wanna select the 1106 uh, model version. That's what gives you the GPT-4 Turbo and that 128,000 size. DALI 3 is in preview. Again, it's only certain regions. So this is this huge leap forward in the ability to generate images. And you're seeing it all over the internet right now. Everyone's creating an image of something. There's some new responsible AI options. So we see this a lot about protecting from harm going in the prompt that we can feed in. Maybe it's got aggression or violence, whatever that might be. There's different levels of control, low, medium, high we can apply, and also the response is back. So they've opened this up so now all customers have all of those severity levels available to them. And I can also have certain filtering and via content filters. There's also now some additional features around the DALI models with a digital credential watermark built in. There's new jail break protections. Um, it can detect if copyrighted material like song lyrics or exact code is being leveraged. And there's also now support for some networking security options. So this is all about the interactions between the different services. This could be Azure OpenAI, this could be Azure AI Search, it could be Blob that's got some of the data. And it's now letting me use things like trusted services for some of those interactions. So if I've got the firewall turned on, for example, on storage, I can say, hey, allow trusted services, which would now enable Azure AI Search to interact with it. Same for Azure OpenAI. For other ones like Azure OpenAI talking to AI Search, I could use private endpoints. And of course, on all of those, we still have authentication. And the article that goes through this is actually really nice because one of the things it does is it shows me 
those interactions and it shows you which options. So AI search talking to OpenAI, I can just say make it a trusted service, but if OpenAI wants to talk to AI search, well, I use private endpoints. All of the others though can use just the bypass trusted service option. And notice all of them for the authentication can use managed identity. So I can enable managed identity for them and for that authentication, I can leverage that, which is a really important thing. Remember, we never just think about one layer. It's always defense in depth, zero trust. And so we're, we're checking, hey, the minimal network permissions, we're checking, hey, do you have the specific authentication to be able to leverage that service? Okay, so moving on, miscellaneous. So the Azure Monitor Managed Prometheus, this is the new type of Azure Monitor workspace that is only metrics. This is different from the existing Azure Monitor Log Analytics workspaces, which is logs and metrics. Today, this new type of workspace is only for these Prometheus metrics. But then what it does is it also lets you use PromQL to query and alert on the information it ingests. So this is a managed new workspace that is compatible and allows it to be spoken to from those Prometheus compatible monitoring solutions. And now what it's saying is the rules that I can define, I can now define in the portal. So those various rule groups that previously I had to manage programmatically, hey, I can now go in the portal, I can create them, I can modify them, I can do all of that through there. Defender for APIs is gone GA. So this is all about, hey, I have my own APIs, I want to help protect them from different types of security threats. So it can actually ascertain what the API is talking to, maybe if that information is PII, what is the exposure, is it sensitive data, what are the API attack paths that could be used, and then it helps harden those API gateways, it protects against those OWASP top 10 uh, threats for APIs, and a whole bunch more. So that is now available. And then Azure Automation now supports PowerShell 7.2 runbooks. And that was it. As always, I hope this was useful. Until next video, take care.